Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, and welcome to Tech Niche Tips. I am your host, Joseph M. Smith, and I'm excited to have you with us. But I'm also excited because I have a special guest with us, none other than the CEO and founder of Course Careers himself, Troy. All right, Troy, I'm so glad to have you with us, and this is going to be an exciting time. I think a lot of people are going to hear things that they may not have heard of before, and I think that we're going to have a lot of people, a lot of people be interested. Awesome. In careers. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for having me on the, the show, Joseph. Really excited to share my story and see what kind of advice and tips and tricks I can provide to your audience. Fantastic. Well, the first thing I want to do, because you are my first guest, <laughs> this is going to be, this is going to be amazing. You are my first guest. So what I want to do is introduce everybody to the concept that I have, which is called boots to the brain. And basically that means that the boots is symbolic of the journey that it takes somebody to get to where you are, your journey, how you got here, you know, the pitfalls, the, the ups and the downs, because it all makes up who you are, right? That's, that's the first part of what we're going to talk about. And then the second part we're going to talk about is the brain, which is symbolic of the mindset that you need to have in order to not only arrive to where you are, but to scale to the next level. And so with that being said, I would love, Troy, if you could first talk about your journey and where you started. And yeah, we can start from the very beginning because the beginning is a very good place to start. So the, the very beginning, uh, really course careers inception was when I was 16 years old. So very clearly remember this, I was sitting in my history class and the guidance counselor walks in the room and they say they're doing a quick survey. They want everyone to raise their hand who plans on going to uh, college and everyone raised their hand except for me. And I thought that was absolutely insane because at that point I was really questioning the value of college. Uh, I mean, at the time I was in some of the most advanced classes my high school offered. I was getting straight A's with the lowest attendance, <laughs> very like poor student by traditional means because I just wasn't showing up to class. I was learning everything on my own the modern way on Khan Academy, on YouTube, and I would just show up to school and take quizzes, take tests and get really high scores. Uh, so I really questioned if going to college was the, the right move for myself. And when that guidance counselor walked in and asked that question, I was the only person who didn't raise their hand. I realized something was fundamentally broken with the system. Uh, and I, I really set my mind on figuring out a way to fix it. Wow. So from a very young age, you said, I'm going to change the system. That is powerful. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about what directions you took about achieving that, changing the system. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, I mean, once I had that mind, mind shift at 16 years old, where it's like, I'm not going to go to college. I mean, once I got this counselor walked in, everyone raised their hand at that moment. I like, I was still kind of on the fence. I was pretty sure I wasn't going to go, but after everyone raised their hand, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not going. Something has to change here. The system is broken. People obviously don't know where, where we're headed. I mean, the fact that I was getting really good grades with very poor attendance uh, just by using the internet uh, means that like this thing is going to you know take take a foothold in the uh, workplace too. I mean, people are going to use online education to start careers, to advance careers. Uh, at the time, people were using it to advance their careers, but it wasn't heard of to use online education to start your career. You still had to go the traditional path, get that sheepskin uh, to be able to get your, your foot in the door. I thought that is fundamentally broken. Uh, and then really going down the rabbit hole for the, the next couple of years, trying to uncover the value of a college degree. Uh, so much so that at 19 years old, I actually started writing a book called The Lean Career, where I break down the value of a college education into its most fundamental parts. So I could then reason up to figure out a new model that's specifically built for our modern economy. Because at the end of the day, our economy has changed a tremendous amount in the past couple hundred years. But if you look at college, I mean, how much has college really changed in the past couple hundred years? We still have the same four-year degree, right? You sit in the classroom, you get a general education, 
Uh, but in reality, we live in a specialized economy with specialized jobs that require a specialized education. Uh, and this is continues, our economy continues to get more specialized and more complex every day. So every day, the need for a more specialized uh, education becomes even more profound. So it's, I mean, I, I had that realization. I wrote that book. I figured out a new way to build our education system from the ground up. Uh, and then I just started building and I, I didn't stop. I didn't give up. And, and here we are now. Course Careers is the largest company in the college alternative space. We're growing tremendously fast. We're helping tons of people change their lives every day. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are using our program as a college alternative. So really everything I, I set my mind on achieving, it's, it's starting to come true. Uh, and we still haven't even scratched the, the surface yet. I want, you to, I want you to say that for the people in the back again. You said that Course Careers is the largest online training platform right now? Yeah, yeah, we've surpassed every company, uh, and now we're we're the largest in the college alternative space. So specifically, online education to to start careers. Oh man, that is amazing! I that is amazing. It's so funny to think that you know, from one video, um, and we're going to talk about that in a few. But it's so funny to think of you that that was this the case? Let me ask you this. Let me let me phrase the question this way. Before a particular video was out there. How, how many students did Course Careers have? So we've been growing between, I, I probably don't want to release specific numbers, between 25% to 100% a month consistently. Oh. Uh, so that's monthly compounding growth. Yeah. <laughs> so. You have so stock it's, options? It's just, <laughs> what's that? Is there stock <laughs> options available? Yeah, for, for some of our employees, Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I know they're pretty happy right now. Uh, but when we see that number, like it, it's only speeding up too. So a lot of people say like, once you hit a certain amount of revenue, like your growth simply has to slow down for us, the bigger we get, the more revenue we have, the faster we're growing, which is, is really unheard of. Um, but I think it's going to continue getting faster and faster because I mean, we're at this inflection point right now where companies are dropping their degree requirements, less people are going to college. I mean, there's about 3.2 million high school graduates every year. Uh, in the past, just a handful of years ago, over 70% of recent high school graduates would go on to attend a four-year university. A new study was done by one of the largest student loan processors of current high school students, and they found that only 51% even plan on going to a four-year college. That's plan on it. That means in actuals, it's going to be in the, the 40s. So we're talking at over a million students, a, a million high school graduates, new ones aren't going to college uh, over the next couple of years. So the market is just enormous and companies are picking it up. They're realizing all this talent isn't getting four-year degrees. How do we attract it? Uh, and there really is no solution uh, currently other than course careers. So that's where uh, the, the market is really just primed and pulling our, our company along very nicely. That is something else when you think about it, that that yeah. amount of percentage of high school students are like, they don't even plan to go to college because they realize, they understand, they see, they have eyes to see, they have ears to hear, they have a brain to understand that things have changed, you know? For sure. And yeah, so, I mean, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you're currently in high school, right, and you're trying to figure out people to look up to and you see one of your friends that's a year ahead of you and they're already making $70,000 a year on a six figure career path. Uh, like, I mean, how do you deny that? You know, then you look at other people that graduated college in tons of debt, struggling to land any job. They look at someone like myself, 24 years old, founder of a very large company. Uh, so it's there. I mean, the, the results are there. Like, People are, are noticing that a lot of people are becoming very successful by specifically by not going to college, because by not going to college, you get a four year head start on your time. Uh, that's a huge opportunity cost right there. So four years of your time, you can actually be building skills, acquiring work experience, working on a business, saving up all of that money 
along with not having any debt, which is just a recipe for success. I mean, when you're young and don't have any responsibilities, don't have any debt, uh, while being able to put a buttload of money in the bank because you don't have any responsibilities or many, many costs. Uh, I mean, that, that is an opportunity vehicle right there. So that's why if you go on YouTube or just read stories, like, I mean, every single year, you're going to see more and more uh, specifically young people building enormous amounts of wealth because that is such a large opportunity vehicle when you are young, don't have any costs, but make lots of money with no debt. You're preaching to the cro- you're preaching to the choir right now because yeah. I completely agree with that. In fact, one of my personal passions is to get more young adults, and I would say at that point they'll be older teenagers, eighteen, yeah. nineteen, into a mindset of listen, you can use this course careers, tech boot camps in general, but you could use this to allow that to pay for your college. If you want to go that route, whatever the case may be, but get that job, (laughs) get that, get that, get that income, because that's a life-changing income that honestly can change generations. Now, Mm -hmm. now when we, I want to go back to your journey a little bit and I want to peel back the onion because somebody listening in could say, man, you know, Troy, Yes, it was tough in high school, but man, he went from high school to being, <laughs> to being the CEO and founder of this amazing company. But they, uh, in, in all journeys, there are times of highs and lows. And yeah. so can you peel back the onion talking about maybe some of the areas that were a bit challenging in regards to building this? Because there are people that are watching you, and I've spoken to them myself, who say, I want to do what Troy does. They, may, they, they see the highlights. But can you show the low lights for a little bit? Can you talk about that? Yeah. So in my, between the ages of 18 and 24, so six years of time, I'm sure that I've failed more and had more rejection than most people have in a lifetime. <laughs> so that, that's, that's what it takes to start a business. You, no one knows everything. Uh, I mean, I knew nothing. I didn't have any connections, didn't have really uh, much money, just my personal savings from working uh, as an account executive when I was 19. And that was it. Uh, Didn't have any direction on building a business, no personal connections, no family connections. I just had to figure everything out, which means you have to fail a lot really fast and you have to get up really fast. Uh, So for, for many years, I didn't really know where I was going. I wasn't making much progress with my life. I wrote that book, The Lean Career, because I didn't know how to start a business. Uh, I didn't even know what the problem was. So it's like, how do you go about solving one of the largest problems in the world, which is the student loan crisis and college not properly preparing people for jobs and employers not having qualified talent to be able to hire? I mean, that's a huge problem. No one ever figured it out. People thought it was impossible to solve, right? Uh, it was it was so complex, in fact, that really the only way to even come up with a solution, and at the end of the day, that's what companies are, they're solutions to problems. Uh, so the only way for someone to even come up with a solution would be to think about it so hard and break, break it down to most fundamental components by writing a book. Uh, so I spent about a year doing that. I had two girlfriends break up with me because I was very poor. Uh, I refused to spend money on anything that wasn't the business and even the business. I was very cautious of, of spending any money on until I, I had some uh, foothold. Uh, so yeah, I faced a lot of rejection. Starting a business is tremendously difficult. Uh, and it's it's definitely not for, for most people. And you have to care more than the money. Like if all I cared about was making money, then I would have given up a long time ago because uh, no amount of money is worth how much pain and rejection you have to go through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. Finding that why is the key to life. It really is that motivating factor to see why am I getting up today? Why am I moving? And you may be watching this and you may be saying to yourself, man, I haven't found my why. Your why is probably around you right now. Locate that why. Find that why, because that why is going to be the catalyst to change your life. So your journey is amazing, Troy. And honestly, I want to definitely... I know a lot of people can gain from this, listening to this conversation and just seeing your journey and hearing your journey. And I want to talk about a little bit about what tech 
sales has, first of all, it's ingenious that you decided to do check sales because every business needs sales. Without sales, mm -hmm. there is no business. And so the fact that you fell into this career in a way and the fact that you actually, I shouldn't say you fell in because you did a lot of research, but the fact that you were able to pick this out and decide to go this route is great. Now, let me ask you, because I know you said you didn't, you thought about other things. What other career paths did Troy ever think of? just for those that are curious. Yeah, so I, I tested out a bunch. So, I mean, right when I uh, was graduating high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Uh, I just knew I wasn't gonna go to college. So that put me in a, a pretty bad position. So, I mean, I've always wanted to change the college system, always thought it was broken, but how do you do that when you have no skills or money, right? It's completely like uh, unreasonable. So I realized, okay, I have to start a career. I have to acquire a valuable skill set and I have to get some money. So what do I do? like? What, what career do I choose? How do I even get my foot in the door? Uh, and this really put me in a bad position where I actually decided to go homeless and hitchhike from Atlanta, Georgia, all the way to San Francisco. Uh, for two months, I was eating out of trash cans, sleeping on the street. I mean, I was roughing it uh, to try to figure out what to do with my life. So I was yeah, really trying to contemplate things. And I realized that talking to people, catching rides while hitchhiking, that was all sales. I even went panhandling. I mean, I was holding up a sign asking people to give me money without me giving them anything in exchange. So I realized that, you know, if I'm able to do that, then I could probably sell something. And I know to change the college industry, you need to start a tech company. It's going to be an online education tech company that is going to replace college. So I decided I need to be in the tech industry. Uh, and then I worked back from there. I was like, okay, what skill sets are the most valuable? And then that's when I learned, well, I, I'm decent at sales. I like sales. Having people's skills is very valuable. And as far as starting a company goes, sales skills, they are the most valuable skill set for starting a business. You have sales and you have product development. So for a tech company, that's usually software developers and salespeople. If you have those two skill sets, you can start a business. Uh, so I picked the sales side and then I was off to the races. I was able to get my foot in the door with a sales development internship. And the way I did that was I had this hypothesis. And at the time, I mean, it sounded crazy, but now it's <laughs> it doesn't sound crazy by any means that if I learned so much about a very particular skill set, in this case, sales development, and then companies would choose to hire me over college graduates because I knew that companies were hiring these college graduates and these college graduates knew nothing about what sales development was. Uh, they didn't know how to do the job. They didn't know what they would be doing. So I came up with this hypothesis. If I figured out what the job was, how to do it, all the latest and greatest best practices, uh, then they would actually choose me over this college graduate with general education. So what I did is I put my head down, read every book on sales development, watched every video on YouTube, uh, pretty much just consuming every bit of information I could, consumed a lot of wrong information, so I had to unteach myself a few things. Uh, but I was able to put that to the test and get my foot in the door with a sales development internship. They chose me over a college graduate because I was able to do the job that they were hiring for just like I thought they would. And that was really like my initial that hypothesis, once I did it for myself, that proved that this could be done for other people, that if you got a specialized education to do the particular job, then companies would prefer you over someone, even if they had a college degree with just a general education. Uh, and that's when kind of like the, the vision for the, the solution to the problem was born. That was a bar right there, people. If you heard the <laughs> gems that were dropped, there were many. One of them. You have to do the job to get the job. You have to mm -hmm. do the job to get the job. Now, I would be remiss if I just skimmed over the fact that you said you were homeless and you said you had to basically use the sales skills that you were developing as a person that was going and traveling and not having a, a roof over their head to survive. Wow. Mm -hmm. What did you learn about humankind? People. What did you learn about people during that period of your life? So people are nice. Believe in people. Uh, pe people help me out more than I thought they would, more than others thought they would. 
Uh, so people went out of their way to give me food, give me rides, give me shelter, uh, pretty much everything you could ask for. I mean, I remember I was hitchhiking through Arizona. I wanted to go to the Grand Canyon. A nice family. They picked me up. They drove me all the way to the Grand Canyon. I rode in their car, went to it for free. We walked around and then they drove me to Las Vegas and gave me like $40 to go to a buffet. I mean, <laughs> I didn't even ask for that. They, they, they did that all by themselves. Uh, just, just, you know, humankind. Uh, so very, very impressed with, uh, with people and how much just society is willing to go out of their way to, to help others. And that's very true in business too. I mean, I didn't get here, uh, from not helping others and people didn't get in their place from not helping others. So yeah, I've asked for a lot of help. I've received a lot of help. People ask for me for help. I give help. Uh, so yeah, don't be afraid to, to ask for, for help and that, Humankind, I think, just wants to, to be helpful at the end of the day. That is beautiful. Very well said. If you have hands that are open to give, you have hands that are open to receive. And I think that is amazing what mm -hmm. you just said there. And I think that we can all learn from your journey about, um, again, and I'm not trying to harp on this for any other reason, but to encourage people. But Troy was homeless, and now he's a CEO and founder of a multi-million dollar, I guess, is it it? corporation now i don't know <laughs> a company but it's, yeah. it's 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 basically and the reason it's producing so many sdrs it's changing and i told this to troy before i know i do a lot of exclamations <laughs> points in my responses to you because i'm that excited but you have really been used as a catalyst to change generations generations and just thus, thus by doing that changing communities changing the way people live and think about themselves, basically because you're able to provide people an opportunity to better themselves. Whew, that's a lot. Um, I want to give you your flowers. Thank you, Troy. I'm giving you your flowers right now. Thank you personally from my family. You, I, I'll say this. This is kind of out of character. I know I'm interviewing you, but I want to say this personally. Yeah. You gave me the opportunity to, for the first time after my wife and I had six children you gave us gave me the opportunity to allow her to stay home on maternity leave, which she never really had since we've been married because wow. of, of, of this. And I, to me, that's a big deal. To me, it's a very big deal. So so thank you personally from me. And I know there's many countless stories like that. So we're going to transition here. We're going to transition talking to the brain. But I do have a couple of questions before that. And again, brain being the mindset. But the couple of mm -hmm. questions that I do have, because I don't think people understand when, when Troy says this is one of the largest uh, SDR training programs in the world. It's not just SDRs. The, 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 the vision is, is the vision is growing. Could you talk to people because of the success that tech sales and IT program have had? Can you talk a little bit about what are the next steps for course careers? Yeah. Uh, so right now in, Actually, tomorrow we're releasing the digital marketing course. Uh, so now we'll support tech sales, sales development, information technology careers, digital marketing careers. We really plan to start by supporting every single entry level career in the tech industry. So if you're looking to start a new career or switch careers, course careers is the place for you. Then we plan to expand into the trades. Uh, so think welding, plumbing, uh, being an electrician, uh, really supporting all the entry level careers in the trades. And then once we do that, really trying to dive deep into some of the, the fields that haven't changed for a while. So think like medicine, law, uh, and then help people more efficiently start careers in those fields and therefore reduce the, the cost of the services in, in those fields. Uh, and then as far as being able to provide for our students, uh, we are looking at purchasing a couple college campuses pretty soon to give people uh, a way to ex get the college experience at a very affordable price while learning valuable information online to start their careers. So now you don't have to sacrifice giving up that college experience just to be able to, to start a good career or not going to debt. I think I'm, I think my mouth just dropped. <laughs> I think my mouth just dropped. That is amazing. We're support so you have entry level tech jobs, then you have mm -hmm. entry level non tech jobs. Then we're going to introduce a college experience at a, a reasonable price, like yeah, 
let me know when the, when you guys go public or something because I want to get some stock because this is this is amazing. This is amazing. I don't know if I don't know if you, have you ever mentioned that to anywhere else. This is the first place you're talking about it. Uh, this, this is the first place I publicly mentioned it. So we've been trying to keep it low key until we got got large enough where we'll be the the ones who can purchase them. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's a big vision. And really, our mission statement as a company is unlocking human potential in our economy. So right now, if you think about it, so much human potential is currently being locked away because either they have to choose between spending four years or more of their life and going into significant debt or not being able to start the career that they envision and can do. Uh, so we are really getting all this potential unlocked into our economy, allowing employers to easily identify and hire it, uh, and then ultimately provide for our economy and provide for themselves and their families. Uh, so we believe unlocking human potential isn't just in one job or one industry. Really, our economy is so broad. And think about education too. Education's quickly changing. Can... So, I mean, could a college campus adapt to using virtual reality to learn how to become a doctor? Uh, I don't think so. But could a large tech company invest a billion dollars into creating a virtual reality experience to train doctors with the latest and greatest best practices from all around the world? That's possible. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of big benefits from having a centralized entity uh, that can invest a lot more money into education and research and development than any single college campus can. So we can provide a, a level of education that no one really could compare to. Wow. So investors, you heard him first. <laughs> if you're investors, he, hear this, hear this. If you want to put, <laughs> put a place to put your money. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the funny thing. I remember I was, when I was starting the company, I was trying to get investment. Uh, and I mean, I had some people uh, make an offer, but it's like, it wasn't as much as I wanted, um, which is still, it was crazy because people were willing to give me money just on an idea to some random kid who didn't have any network and didn't even go to college. Uh, so like kudos to them for, for making the offer. Um, but now it's like the, the, it's the, the script is flipped. So <laughs> they're trying to give me money. I'm like, no, no, you're too late. <laughs> <laughs> you're too late. I don't need you anymore. I don't need you yeah. anymore. Oh man, this is amazing. It reminds me of the country. My, my parents are from Guyana and they just yeah. discovered oil there, about 11 billion barrels of it. So people from all over the world are now flocking. <laughs> and so I feel like that's course careers. The oil has been found <laughs> and people are flocking now, but it might be too late. Yeah. Oh man. So with that being said, I'm going to transition over to the brain and this is not going to take too long mm -hmm. because we're going to wrap it up pretty much very soon. But what and we kind of covered a little bits of it. But if you were to sum it up, what kind of mindset does somebody need to have to be Troy, to be you, to be able to not only be where you are, but to have that vision to grow? Because that's that's uncanny, in my opinion. That's not a normal thing to see from people is just that perseverance to, to see and uncover treasure and be able to build on top of that. Can you talk about that mindset? Yeah. And. I'm going to just say one thing. So as far as mindset is concerned, the only reason I'm here where I am today is because I didn't give up and I will never give up. Uh, so any reasonable person would have given up when trying to start this business. I didn't make any progress for so many years. Uh, I mean, I lost two girlfriends because I refused to, to get a job. Uh, and there was no like there was no light at the end of the tunnel. I was walking in, There's, it's completely dark. I'm trying to find my way out and I refuse to, to leave. I'm going to go through this tunnel no matter what. That's the mindset you have to have if you're trying to solve big, complex problems that have never been solved before. I mean, at the time, people thought it was impossible to replace the, the college system. Uh, but now it's looking like the other way around. It's like, it's inevitable. <laughs> uh, so it's just, you, you can never give up no matter what keep going at it and you'll start figuring out things. So, I mean, as time goes on, you figure out one thing that leads to a new discovery, that leads to a new discovery, that leads to more resources that allow you to reinvest. And then like you become like where we are now where the flywheel is spinning 
And it's like, even if I didn't do any work for the next month, course careers is still growing a lot. Uh, so it's just, you, you need to, to not give up, keep going and every single thing that you figure out, leverage that. I mean, I went, I, I, a lot of people don't know this and I don't think I've ever mentioned it, but I went into significant credit card debt to start this company. I was like $30,000 wow. in credit card debt. Uh, so not only did I, I spend most of my money and live a, an extremely frugal life, uh, but I, I also went into significant debt um, because I believed in it so much. It's, it was so much more than, than just the money, and I refused to, to give up. And I'm not saying you should go into credit card debt. It was, I mean, there's, <laughs> in most cases, it probably would turn out to be a very bad idea. Um, but, but sometimes if you just don't give up, then, uh, yeah, it can, can lead to great places. Wow. 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 And to quote Thanos, it's inevitable. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. Persevere. So I think that, that sums up your journey. Really? Your journey is all about perseverance. Even if you, even if we want to like poke at the high school Troy that used technology, use a computer to answer all the questions and things <laughs> like that. In a way, that was kind of as being resilient, right? Um, mm -hmm. It was hard at that time, and so hey, I want to, I, I gotta get this grade, right? But the whole, I mean, and I'm not condoning cheating, by the way. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, like perseverance, having that grit, having that resilience is really, really everything, man. I'm going to have to watch this a couple of times myself. Oh, that's, that's how I feel. Because how many people go through a hardship? How many people go through a challenge and they want to give up? And mm -hmm. they never seen their vision and realize. I mean, the grave, we talk about all the time. The grave is one of the wealthiest places for all those dreams that passed away. For all those visions that died and never saw another day. So I think that a lot of people can glean from this. And uh, I think, well, let me ask you this, and you could, it's, this is more of a closed mm -hmm. question. And you could let me know if this is what, if you agree with me, but you wouldn't you agree that that advice that you would give to somebody trying to make a successful course similar to yourself is the same thing you just said, perseverance. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely not going to be easy uh, to say the least. So just, you can't give up and you need to believe in yourself before anyone else will believe in you. Uh, so in the day, it, it comes from within. So even while everyone's saying you shouldn't be doing this, uh, that's so dumb, that's not going to work, which if it is a, a really great idea on the, the frontier, then people will be saying it. If they aren't saying it, then you're, you're probably not thinking big enough. Uh, so you have to believe in yourself before other people believe in you. Well said. Believe in yourself before other people believe in you. All right, so that is it for us on here on Tech Niche Tips. I'm so glad that Troy was with us and that he was able to share all of his wisdom, all of his knowledge, all of his expertise, and really just sharing his story so that we could all learn something from him. And so with that being said, until next time, I hope to see you on the other side. Take care, family. Thanks,